other group. I would like to offer those individuals a lead manufacturer of emergency express food lighting systems. And I'm really sorry, I've never heard this word in my life before. Portable uh, photo luminescent synthesis in India. I'm really sorry, I've never heard about this before in my life. It was incorporated in 1984. It has India's largest single location integrated manufacturing facility at over 30,000 square feet. So I would want to welcome the new generation architect, Hrithi Javaridas, and the audience for the word and I'm not that for. Dead and nearly a dozen injured passing from the heart of some from in a couple of weeks from having to sell restaurants 
Once in the industrial area, the 37 acre of Marcel houses a host of spiky restaurants that have moved in over the last few years, making it a popular nightlife destination. And remember, we are getting closer to the new year that the injured were rushed to King Edward Memorial Hospital, that's a KEM. Uh, KEM hospital just about three kilometers away and according to initial reports the fire is suspected to have started at a restaurant called Mojo Bistro a little after midnight and uh, last that's last night and it is said the entire building was engulfed in flames in less than half an hour it took the fire department over three hours to extinguish the blaze in fact several news channels which operate on the compound had to be shut down taken off air in order to ensure now, at the government's file of 2016, the technical investigation carried out by the Google Fire Brigade suggested that the fire began at Mojo Bistro due to air and flying angles originating from Abuka and spread from Mojo's pub to another restaurant called Bonaparte via flammable materials like curtains to decorate the flag and bamboo canopies that were illegally constructed on the rooftop. Now, neither of the restaurants had any emergency exits or the functioning uh, fire equipment that fire is usual. The restaurants were also found to have no documentation or licenses or permits required to serve alcohol or rooftop or food on the rooftop. There existed only one door that led to the rooftop from a staircase, which stayed enclosed all the while the fire raged, eventually claiming the lives of 15 people and burning down multiple offices. To name another fire emergency, I can think of the 2004 of school blaze that began from the thatched roof of the kitchen and spread through the classrooms. And although the school and aided private school and the nursery complete primary school were operating from a single building with a single engine, the inferno raged for an hour and burned 94 children beyond shut up mission. Firefighters and people from the neighborhood were found tearing down concrete school walls to help those traffic sites escape because the only way into the classroom was through a narrow staircase. The school gates were also kept locked during the daytime to not have children escape the premises. That means that the ones who did manage to escape out of the building remained in the fire mess. And then there is the Omaha cinema case of uh, 1997 in Delhi that started at the point of transformer and where 59 people uh, died of asphyxiation and another 100 were seriously injured in Stanford. Then there is the Shishila Fortune Glass Fire Restaurant where it was seen leaping off buildings to save their lives, many of them left to their deaths. And then the lawyers and argued that fires are an act of war in the defense of the lands. From the Kamla Mills case, the building in January 2022, unfortunately, the situation seems to have remained the same. These rampant accidental fires that consume many, many buildings and establishments and institutions put on display the gaping abyss between India's dreamy visions for its future and the full reality of urban chaos and lawlessness. What we learn from these incidents in these case studies is that fires are widely a result of poor work, negligence, and a blatant disregard for regulations. But now I want to talk about an incident that probably changed how we dealt with emergencies when they matter or matter. A little known fact about the Midas of the World Trade Center in New York is that they were first dropped by a blast in their basement in 1993. The aim was to obviously keep the tower down and have its position for rubble, but the the impact of this explosion was not as large as was intended, and yet six people lost their lives. Panic ensued the explosion at the pool, and the consequent evacuation of thousands of people was one of the slowest and excruciating events to happen. The emergency power generator and lighting sources for the towers were built in the sixth basement of the tower and functioned only for 20 minutes before shutting down completely due to the cold. The towers plunged into darkness and what followed was the evacuation of people that took close to 12 hours 
due to no emergency lighting to light up the staircases or the common areas or any photoluminous sign to guide people towards floor entrance. It became a blind race to see from staircases, common area and emergency exits. The 1993 US Fire Administration technical report and analysis of World Trade Center bombing holds that uh, bombing at WTC was truly a worst case scenario when the primary and backup systems were disrupted. Thus, dependence on one central hub for all the resources was generated, and an independent emergency lighting system that was bare basic concept of safety could be. The report also quotes that post bombing, precautionary measures were taken and the following uh, steps were taken. 1600 emergency battery powered lighting units were installed in the exit stables, the common area, and the elevator lobbies. Photoluminescent signs or phosphorescent signs were then were installed to guide the way to floor entry doors in the fire stairs. And photoluminescent tape page was applied to stair trails and place perimeters of the doors and in the fire stairs. Now, owing to the precautions they took in 1993, when the eventual fall of the twin towers did come in 2001, roughly 99% of the people below the floors of impact managed to evacuate successfully in a short amount of time. The change from central power dependent emergency lighting or slave luminance in 1993 to self contained luminance managed to save the hundreds of lives that would have been otherwise lost in 2001. Now, Despite all the precautions, it begs the question, what did we really learn from the 1993 blast at World Trade Center? Broadly, we learned that emergency facility must be independent of general facility. Which brings me to tell you why I am here. Independent lighting systems lead us proper of central day luminous and supreme from this day and age, and this is where ProLight does its job the best. We speak wider of emergency lighting than the self-contained because self-contained luminaires are modern and the factors are only made more advanced as we speak. They are being upgraded and streamlined up to the minute. We have longer lights, standard communication, and have even easier on the grid. They are autonomous, thus function independently of the current source. And additionally, in the event of failure of one fixture, all other fixtures function without any disruption. We have observed for years that it's not swerving from the use of centrally connected emergency lighting that people came first or people are used to it. But from our work, we have come to an inference that emergency that emergency lights that self-contained are irreliably are abundantly reliable in under emergency risk. Moreover, emergency lighting and photoluminescent signs go hand in hand. This was evident in the report analysis of the where the need for photoluminescent signs was felt by the building occupants as well as the fire fighters to fail to locate door exits to the building being total and utter darkness. One needs the minutest amount of light to reach an exit marked by a photoluminescent sign. Emergency lights and strategically installed photoluminescent signs are not optional but are mandatory under the National Building Board. Additionally, NBC also requires for 10% of all lighting to be backed with self contained units. We at ProLight are sure that all our products are manufactured with standards prescribed by the NBC and we also offer free consultancy to our clients about what to buy, where to fit, and how to use. We offer our clients advice on the final points of installation and placement who are thus never in violation of the laws and frames, the laws and rules framed under the NBC. We like to say, if you haven't done it all, you haven't done it at all. Since our inception in 1984, Prolite Automobile Limited has been on a journey to make people aware of the insurmountable importance of emergency systems in an establishment. We are one of India's fastest growing companies and have become market leaders for exit and emergency egress through light systems. We aim to make people aware and alert everywhere using the latest technologies in emergency lighting and photoluminescent signage and help avoid accidents, deaths, and injuries and have people work about their daily lives safely. We envision ourselves to become a large global enterprise 
by consistently exceeding our planned demands, upgrading our technology, delivering on quality and long term relationships with our customers, our distributors, our associates, and our employers. ProLight has repeatedly broken barriers and exceeded our expectations. We were the first to introduce flameproof exit lights in 1990 and received an ECE certification for emergency exit lights in 2008. Since then, we have received several accolades for our products and our innovation. By 2015, ProLight had become India's largest single location integrated manufacturing and research and development department with in-house teams. In 2019, we became an ISO 9001-2015 company and continue to work and scale even greater heights. But our journey has not been easy. We have been questioned and quizzed by the most powerful of the significance of our work. So trust us when we say we've been asked. Yet, we are asking questions now. I want to and that's right, but that means you actually wait for fire to reach your location in order to escape from fire, right? Take a loss. There are five alternate sources of power. UPS, inverter, generator. So, in this problem, in this situation, they will be able to do their own thing. So, in science, what do you need to do? So, I agree. But the thing is, all of these, they do not go to you fire as they operate on the roots and that would be stopped by the fire in case of a disaster. So at that time, only self-contained battery life supplies and for the limits of sandwiches will be functioning. And that's substantially going to help you with the battery. Very late, I said. Specialized and customized emergency lighting to nuclear and thermal power plants, 
and have been involved in other prestigious projects like the Statue of Unity at Kevadia and Yotra. We have also devised empathy solutions for institutions for the blind and the differently able because we do not believe in leaving anybody behind. Of the many products we manufacture post COVID, we have newly introduced the following. Our infinite emergency lighting system has been devised with the aim to have emergency lighting integrated with general. Our series is announced to the world and can be turned and modeled as space details. Infinite also works around the aesthetics of a design by functioning according to the rules data. Since it is a series of lights in a linear sequence with some lights made to function as emergency lights, Infinite can take different shapes and go as long as demand. It comes in a maintained, non-maintained and non-emergency variants with a battery backup of 3 hours and is available with a higher backup of it. Our emergency downlighters are ceiling mounted LEDs for battery backup lights and their objective is to allow quick linear movement of the building occupants in the tower. They operate on low wattage and thus save on power too. They are inconspicuous, that is they are hardly noticeable and do not impact the aesthetics of the design. Our downlighters find use in open spaces like cabins, rooms or restrooms, and passage areas like corridors and staircases. They are available in maintained and non-maintained areas. Our flow embedded emergency lighting system came around as a result of practical thinking. In a condition of dense flow, it is recommended that people crawl on their knees, and while on one's knees, it is nearly impossible to locate an escape sign that is usually installed at a height of 8 feet. It is thus devised to be of assistance to those who are evacuating under dense or are falling. Our floor embedded exit lights come with clear and robust glass cover that guide people on safety in the tower. It comes with a preset dimmer that, when on power supply, doesn't hurt the eyes and saves on power, but once switched to battery, it becomes brighter and visible for people who escape in total darkness. Our search and rescue emergency light is a self-contained portable emergency light that is capable of providing daylight visibility in complete darkness and facilitates in illuminating corners and crevices in dire circumstances. It is ideal to be used by those traveling by roads and works excellently in fire, fire hazards. It is telescopically adjustable to the height of 12 feet and provides light continuously for 3 hours or more. It comes with a dimming option as well. Our flame proof emergency exit lights are designed for establishments handling and retailing flammable components, combustible dust fibers, oil or gas, or for those working in the construction industry or other hazardous locations. Prolight was the first to introduce flame proof emergency exit lighting in 1990. They are robust and reliable in the harshest of the condition and can facilitate building occupants to exit in their safety. They are built of die cast aluminium housing and heat resistant holes with plastic fuser and is approved by the CMRI. We are the only one to have certification as to the model numbers specified by the manufacturing company. They come in maintained, non maintained, and non emergency variants. Our emergency bay finding system came around because we wondered what would happen if an airport suffers from a power failure and an aircraft fails to find its bay or planet. We, which directed us to combine bay finding with battery backup emergency lighting and bring both elegant. Elegant is India's first sleek series of emergency escape, bay finding and directional signs that are designed for airports runways, metros, bus terminals, and the lights. They are easy to follow and help passengers efficiently move about and locate their things and exit. They are designed to work on variable voltages and are available for three variants, maintained, non-maintained, and non-emergency. In this of just 50 mm, irrespective of the size, they can be single or double-sided with common internal illumination. Last but by no means the least, our multi utility emergency exit light is a unique exit light that can be mounted in seven different ways to different surfaces to get maximum critical and strategic visibility in any given It comes in a maintained variant and is provided with a battery backup of three hours or more. ProLight is the first company to have received the PI certification for our exit lights. Finally, we 
given that we are in the field of emotional society and social science, which has become our nature to look for means of means and rules of escape wherever we one is burdened with duties such that one only thinks in one way. For instance, sometime back our chairman had to have visit his uh, natural school in the upstate area of Chumu in Mumbai, where the auditorium was built on the third floor and the seating was made predominantly of plastic. A number of scenarios ran through his head and he couldn't help but imagine the fate of the said building under a fire and We believe at the end of it all, it becomes a question of morality. Are the designers willing to take upon themselves the responsibility of the life that may be lost when a disaster occurs? Or are the builders willing to bear the burden of the life that perish? Or do they hold the uh, uh, occupants around? We point out and fires occur, buildings collapse, and people die. We see and meet every day of which can be fired the darkness of their lives. Many lives are lost in panic of escape. Uh -huh. And as we previously mentioned, we have had many hijacking options as us why emergency lighting is necessary when fire has an abundance of light or why we can invest in emergency systems when they already have generators and inverters in place. We believe it is our destiny to invent a way for them because we do not take the plan to And every time we do, we do it with a smile. Our technical team is seeded by the panel of blue light and should any queries arise, they will be more than happy to help you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you so much for your presentation and for the